Hey, my name is Ben. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be doing some experiments on my electrical system. And this is actually something that I want to start kind of as a series, is just kind of simulating different scenarios that could occur and just working towards understanding electrical systems better and better. So for the first video in this series, what we're going to be doing is pretty interesting and can bring up a lot of uh, and clarify a lot of myths that are out there around grounding. So what we're going to do ultimately is connect a hot wire of 120 volts directly to that freshly driven ground rod over there in the yard. And then we're gonna see what happens. Will that breaker trip instantly? That's kind of what the conventional knowledge would be. Electricity wants to take the path of least resistance to ground. So, brand new ground rod, let's hook 120 volts to that ground rod and see what happens. Now real quick, I just wanted to mention I am being as safe as possible. I am very familiar with electrical concepts and how they work, so I'm going to do everything that I can to be absolutely safe. But by no means am I saying that what I am doing is recommended in any way. So I'm doing this at my own risk and you guys can learn along with me. and will be as safe as possible. You can see I have my safety glasses and my gloves on today. So we're doing better than usual. <laughs> In these educational style videos, I'm going to introduce additional problems into the equation so that as we go through, we can learn together about the way different types of devices can affect the experiments that we're doing. So just watch for that and we'll see what happens here. So we'll start over here on the ground rod. You can see that we've got this uh, acorn clamp here or this grounding clamp. And we're gonna get that nice and tight onto our 12 gauge wire here. Normally this would be a larger conductor that we'd be clamping in here, typically like a six gauge. But in this case, we just need our 12 gauge is adequate for the test that we're doing today. And since we're using scrap wire, we're going to just be extending this and I'm going to just use a standard wire nut to do so without pre-twisting. In the middle of our wire coming from that ground rod, I've put a single pole switch that we're gonna sacrifice. It may be a little bit hard on the contacts of this switch, uh, but it will serve the purpose for connecting and disconnecting our ground rod from the circuit. And I did test the switch to make sure that the contacts are good and we're getting zero ohms uh, through this switch when it is closed. And then right here in the panel, we have a 20 amp single pole breaker that is connected to that same blue wire that we have hooked to the switch and the ground rod. So I'm just make sure that our switch is in the off position over here, which it is right now. And uh, so it shouldn't trip right away when we turn on the breaker. I'm gonna turn on the breaker and then I'm going to trip it by turning the switch itself on. So this is gonna be turned on. All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna check across these terminals to make sure that we do have 120 volts, which we do. You can see we have 120.3 volts across those two terminals. We have our ammeter clamped around the wire so we'll be able to monitor how many amps is drawn, but most likely it's probably just gonna trip right away, right? So if you guys wanna to try to predict what's going to happen, do you think that this breaker is going to trip or not trip? I'll throw a poll right up here and you guys can click yes or no. Make sure you don't go back and change your answer after you know the truth. Okay, so here we go. And three, two, one. Oh my goodness, it tripped, didn't it? <laughs> Make sure you subscribe right here and click on that bell to turn on, a wait a second. Well, make sure you go ahead and subscribe and click on the bell, but I think that might be a, a dual function breaker. If that's a dual function breaker, that means that it has GFCI built into it. We're gonna have to change out that breaker, aren't we? Let, let's, let's test to see if this really is a GFCI breaker. Huh, can't believe I missed that. Let's look, let's look at this. Anytime you see a test button on one of these breakers, it means it either is going to be AFCI, GFCI, or both. Let me just show you here really quick. I'm gonna turn the breaker on again, and this is gonna be the live end that I'm holding. So we should have 120 volts on this 
end right here. So what I'm gonna show you is that if I touch this to the ground anywhere, even if I just barely touch it to the ground, like right here, watch what happens. There it went. Let's do it one more time. So 120 volts are on this wire right now. Let's go just gently touch it to the ground. Just like that. Just trips that instantaneously. In fact, let's just see what happens when we touch this to the frame of something. I don't even know if it'll arc at all. So I'm gonna reset it again. <laughs> so I'm gonna touch this to the frame of the cabinet. Here we go. So look right there at what 20 amps shorted out directly will do to a terminal. It's pretty dramatic. It was more powerful than I expected it to be. But, hey, we're learning. And let's just see if it still trips. I think it probably will. So even after a direct short like that, uh, that breaker is still working just like it's supposed to from a ground fault perspective. So that's pretty cool. So in order to do this test properly, we're gonna change out this breaker and put in a standard 20 amp breaker. Because with this being a GFCI breaker, it's going to trip every single time we turn on that breaker, regardless of how many amps are being drawn on this wire. In fact, the amp meter didn't even read anything when we turned it on. So we'll go ahead and remove our breaker. You can see right here, on the end, this, this breaker is pretty much shot. It was water damage at one point, but it is still working just fine. But we have our connection for our neutral, which is that screw terminal right there. And then our hot connection is right there. That's where we are connected. And basically what this breaker is trying to do is it's, it's making sure, well, it's making sure that there's no arc fault happening, which um, basically is like burning between the wires uh, in an electrical system. Uh, but it's also checking to make sure that there's no ground faults. So when we, stu when we stuck that wire, in the ground or just touched it to the dirt. Basically what this thing is doing is measuring how much current is going out on the hot wire, which was that blue wire, and then how much current is coming back on the neutral wire, which we didn't even have a neutral wire connected. So once that exceeds five milliamps, if more than five milliamps is going out and is not coming back, then it knows that there is somehow current leaking to ground. And then the uh, breaker, if it's ground fault, will trip based on that alone. So we'll install a regular breaker here now, and then we'll do our test again. All right, we have our 12 gauge wire connected to a standard breaker now. This thing doesn't have the ability to sense that ground fault. You'll also see right here that we only have one connecting point, one terminal. We don't have a neutral terminal that is involved in this at all. So if this were an actual circuit, our neutral, wire would land up on this neutral bus and would have nothing to do with the breaker. So let's go ahead and just snap this in. And it is turned off right now, the breaker is. Oh, by the way, that's why you wear safety glasses when you work with electrical stuff. If something does short out, it's basically like a welding operation that occurs <laughs> when you have a direct short and those little bits of molten metal can get into your eyes and cause all sorts of problems. We have our ammeter set up such that this wire is going through that clamp so we'll be able to monitor any amperage uh, that does get sent through that wire, assuming it doesn't trip instantaneously. Now I have the switch turned off right now over there, so I'm going to be turning that on in order to energize the ground rod so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one on here first. When we turn the switch on, it's gonna, it could be similar to what we did earlier with shorting that wire directly out. That's why you don't wanna use the switch to do what we're doing now. It'd be better to make a metal to metal connection that we can just replace. Uh, Cause basically we have a metal to metal connection that's happening inside of that switch. And obviously that's going to trash the terminals. Here we go. We're gonna flip this on in three, Two, one. Okay, it's on. I didn't hear a click. Is it, uh... oh my word, it did not trip. So we're drawing nine amps right now. Nine amps. Take a look on my Sense Energy Monitor app and we can see 
uh, that we have right now 10 amps being used, which if we take our 10 amps times the voltage, which is about 120 volts, should be around 1,200 watts. So watch what happens here when I shut this breaker off. We should see a drop of around 1,200 watts. Yep, and 1,269 watts dropped off. So kind of neat, you can track your energy usage and see what's going on your on your property. Again, discount link below. That's not why I'm showing this to you. I don't care if you guys buy one or not, uh, but this is just kind of interesting way to be able to basically monitor what's going on. Now, what I have to be extremely careful of is basically what we're gonna have around this ground rod right here is a voltage gradient, because that voltage, that rod over there is at 120 volts, and from there on out, the ground will have less and less voltage. So if I get my uh, electrical tester, let's go grab that. Right now, uh, the power is turned off to this ground rod. We have zero volts between the ground rod and the dirt a couple feet away. So here I'm at the panel, I'm turning the power on. So we should have 120 volts at the ground rod and then should be a voltage gradient coming across the surface of the ground. Now obviously I'm wearing uh, rubber soled shoes but what I want to avoid doing is touching the dirt closer that direction uh, because there could be there is a voltage difference between where I'm standing right here and a foot away and I'm going to show that to you right now. You can see that at two feet from the from the pole, we are at 95.7 volts. So even though this 120 volts is being grounded, it's being hooked directly to ground, we still have a difference in potential of close to 100 volts, 95 volts at two feet. So now let's go back to one foot away. At one foot away, still 86 volts. So if I was barefoot, and I was standing right here next to, this, uh, next to this ground rod, and I touched that thing, that would kill me. Shock straight through the heart and you would, be, you would be toast. So obviously the closer we get here, the less difference there's going to be. So let's go to six inches. At six inches, we are at 75 volts. Three inches, 67 volts. So you can see how I would have to be, see right there, still 41 volts, and it's virtually right next to the pole. If I test directly to the ground rod itself, it's zero because there's zero difference between those two spots. So let's go a little further away. So we knew that we were at 95 volts here, 94, and now at three feet away, we are at 99 volts, and let's go out a little bit further. We'll just go out as far as this thing can reach, which looks like it's gonna be about five feet away. So at five feet away, 105 volts right there. Now I think this means that we should be able to actually measure the difference between two places in the ground. So let's just go right here and right here. 12 volts between those two spots. Now we're at 30 volts between those two spots in the dirt. 36 volts between those two spots in the dirt. That's wild. Okay, I'm gonna go shut this off. So isn't that crazy? If you had asked me a month ago what would happen if I hooked 120 volts to a ground rod and turned the breaker on? I would just say, oh, it's going to trip because it's going to be grounded. Anytime you have 120 volts, it hits a ground, it's going to go boom. It's going to trip instantly. So understanding this concept of ground rods do not fix voltage problems, having a ground rod connected to an electrical system or to a frame of a building 
doesn't actually make it safe. You can imagine how if this ground nut was attached to a like the metal frame of a small building right here, I would think that, oh, the building is now grounded, so if there were to be a ground fault up against the metal frame of the building, I would be safe. Well, that's not true at all because that gradient is so fast away from that ground rod that if, if this is grounded and it's tied to a metal frame of a building right here, and I'm standing right down here and there's a ground fault so that the, the frame of the building is energized with 120 volts and I touch it and I have a good contact to ground, I'm gonna get electrocuted. So grounding in and of itself does not make the system safe. It's a component of the system that makes it safe, but it is not the be all end all. My main camera battery died there, so we are on the GoPro video now. So in an upcoming video, I want to simulate uh, what would happen if we had a situation kind of like what I just described. So we're going to wire up this panel so that we have 240 volts coming into the panel, our grounding electrode connected along with the neutral conductor going back to the, the source. And then I'll simulate a few different situations and common misconceptions, reading through different comments on some of my recent videos videos about separating the neutral and the ground has uh, brought to light that there are quite a few people who have differing opinions on some of this stuff. So uh, being able to just test it and show what happens when a certain scenario is occurring, I feel like it's more beneficial than just like telling you what is wrong or how you need to do it. So the goal of today's video was to get you thinking about grounding, get you thinking about this whole concept and we're gonna keep on discovering it going forward. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right down here and then click the bell to turn on notifications. 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you would take the time just to hit that subscribe button and click the bell. If you wanna see more electrical videos, click right over here on this playlist and I'll see you over there in a few seconds.